We heard him talking about uh, Rasmus Holland, you can see there. So, Sam and Sam, what have you made of him? Well, I felt sorry for Rasmus Holland at the start of the season. He was sort of put in the deep end and he was, he was 20 when he joined. And, and, and for, a, for a young person to sort of take on Manchester United problems right at the top of the team, I felt feel a little harsh on him. It felt like he was the person to learn off somebody else, not be the main man straight away. But what was interesting of what Eric Ten Hag said on Sunday after he scored against West Ham, he said that Hoyland benefits from having fixed combinations, settled partnerships. And Manchester United in the past few weeks have just been a bit more settled as a team. We've got the likes of Kobe Mainu coming into the team and, and giving them a lot more solidity in midfield. The front four has been more settled over recent weeks. So, yeah, I think and Hoyland's benefiting from it. He's got four in his last four Premier League games and five and five in all competitions. It's just it's, it's a brilliant run of form for him at the moment. Let's just hammer home how difficult this jump is that he has attempted to make this season. He has played a handful of seasons in Austria with Stern Graz. Then he's gone to Atalanta and played 20. Well, he's made 20 starts out of 38 and done his first full season. If you can call it that, it's about 1,800 minutes in a top five league. Then he moves to Manchester United, where the pressure is incredible on the number nine and he enters a team that isn't settled. So ask him to do this, given his lack of experience and the price tag that was attached to him. Yeah, of course, it's going to take a little bit of time. He's a young man and he's still finding his feet in football, let alone at the top level. So to see him blossom now with help from Kobe Mainu, with help from the returning Casemiro and the other factors is really pleasing to watch because he was trying so hard and now finally it's paying off. Mm. What are the facts and figures saying, though, Gail? Has his form improved? Well, these are the facts and the figures from the Premier League. It's worth remembering he did get five goals in the Champions League. Uh, he, in his last four appearances, four goals. is actually five in six for him compared to none in those first 14 first appearances. The assist rate's gone up. The shot conversion rate was zero in those first 14 games. And the XG on target is 0.67. It was only 21 uh, this week. And it does take time, as the guys were mentioning, to adapt to the Premier League. Um, if you look at Manchester United's goal involvement per 90 minutes before and after Christmas, there is an overall improvement in all of them. I mean, some would say Marcus Rashford uh, to move to 0.86 still needs to be a little bit higher. But Rasmus Hoyland's is the one isn't it, that really stands out here. And you did touch on it, more settled side. I wonder what the key changes and the personnel that have come back. You mentioned Mino, but who else has helped contribute to a better attacking display from United's front players? Yeah, for me, it's Alejandro Garnacho. So after Christmas, Eric Ten Hag moved him to the right wing position for the very first time in his Manchester United career. He scored twice in that game. He scored twice against West Ham on Saturday. And it's just given Manchester United that little bit of a lift in the final third, as we could see on the stats there. I, you know, it, it's, it's not just his goals, it's his chance creation. Only Phil Foden has more chances created from carrying the ball than Garnacho this season. And that, this is a statistic that Mohamed Salah normally dominates year in, year out. But Garnacho has five more chances created from those ball carries than Salah, despite playing 400 fewer minutes than him. So it's a really, really standout season for Garnacho. And you could even, I could even go as far as to say he's probably one of the best young players in the league. And he's also making a leap because at the start of this season, Garnacho was considered a bit of an impact sub based on what he'd done last season. And it, it's tricky for a young player to make the transition, make the jump from really good off the bench for 15 minutes. Look at that pace. Oh, he's really, he's really punishing defences to... OK, from the first whistle, you are now consistently involved in the game and making the difference. It takes a little bit of time. Maybe it took a position change for Garnacho, but, but look at him now. Yeah, sometimes, though, it, it, it gets good, but suddenly it gets taken away. Let's talk about uh, Lissandro Martinez, shall we? United confirming he's set for a spell on the sidelines and a lengthy one at that. How big an impact could this have, Go. Well, Eric Ten Hag made the point, didn't he, after the game, that he's finally been able to put out a squad a consistent squad and that his big players are now fit and available. And that was, of course, until he lost uh, Lissandro Martinez. If you have a look at the games with him, and without him, there is a significant difference and it's the win rate that probably stands out the most at 13%. This is interesting as well because he offers something of an attacking threat that the other defenders in Manchester United's ranks maybe don't. Uh, goals against, 
uh, unsurprising to see that is 0.2 lower as well with and without him. So I think we get a sense there of the impact that may have a really, really crunch time. I think it's only, only seven games he misses, but by then you've seen how tight this race for the top four is. Yeah, absolutely. I think the, the most striking thing there is, is, is actually the XG and the goals for when he's on the pitch. You don't necessarily associate that with a centre-back, but this speaks to his ability to feed the passes into midfield and to open up teams. There's something that I think a lot of neutrals Non-Manchester United fans still don't quite appreciate Lissandro Martinez enough for, look, he sets a tone, he's aggressive. I think the other players feed off him. I think he's a bit of a commander at the back, as you'd expect. But also that quality on the ball, his ability to split defences open and play those passes into midfield, it's crucial. And it's about 50% of why Eric Ten Hag wanted him in the first place, because that's the tone he wants to set on the ball.